All right, so my recent post on Facebook within the Shapoko farm, I've had a lot of requests for how I made these and the files that I use to make them and where did I get the faces? Okay, so how did I make them? What did I use to make them? And where did I get the designs? All right, so they're pretty much very basic boxes butt jointed with some glue and a couple of brads to hold them in place while the glue dries and the top is meant to come off and you can hang a little hook there and put some LED lights if you want to illuminate the inside and these fit on just like that just like that so to address the first question where did I get the design I basically captured some images off the internet and um, what I did was I edited some nodes to kind of reshape the design to my desired um, taste, I guess, if you will, just to make it a little different. And I exported it. And that's pretty much it. So I'll get to that in a little bit. But basically what I did was I designed it in a way where I cut all three faces out of one board, um, which is a 24-inch length. Um, which yields me three different faces at about eight inches a piece. So that just cuts down on machine time. For me, that was easier. You can do it on, you know, two 24 inch boards and cut out six faces if you want to. So once I have the faces on this board, I'll take it to the table saw and I'll cut those faces out of that board. Very simple, right? Now, once I'm completed with that, I'll start cutting the sides, which is roughly about four and a half inches wide. Again, just my taste. Um, you can certainly make them as wide as you want. In the effort to conserve wood, I made them four and a half inches wide, including the top as well. So, and plus I left a little reveal on each side. Like I said, they're very, these are very simple butt joints with some glue and some brads. So it gives you a little reveal. Some people make the top wider and some people actually put a base. I don't put bases because again, I'm trying to conserve wood. And the backs also are the same dimensions as the front without the cutout. But you can also put another cutout on the back if, if you desire to. And you can have different faces on the back. But I just choose to put it on the front. So what did I use for an end mill? I used an eighth inch up cut end mill. Uh, probably a down cut would be better, but I broke my last one so I don't have any. So I use an up cut. It's a little bit more sanding at the end. Um, cedar likes to create these fine little fibers um, that it's a pain in the butt that you have to sand and sand and sand but if you use a down cut spiral bit you shouldn't have that issue again it depends on your design these are not super detailed but to use a quarter inch you're going to lose a lot of the, these um, hot edges if you use a quarter inch end mill everything's going to be rounded over certainly if you use a 16 inch you can get more detail but i have an eighth inch that works just fine for these designs very simple so the way I make these, the way I make them anyway, is I do three faces on a 24-inch length board, and then the rest I do on the table saw because it's that easy. And what I mean by table saw is I cut the sides and the width and the length at the table saw, and also once all of the faces are carved into this piece, I'll cut those individually at the table saw as well, because it's just easier that way. Less machine time, more efficient. All right, I have both pieces down to a uniform thickness of a half inch, and that's because of the size of my end mill. I have an eighth inch, quarter inch shank that's a little over a half inch long. Okay, so I'm in Carbide Create, and just to show you some of my settings here, basically it's a five and a half inch width by 24 inch in length. And here's the basic overall design. As you can see, like I said, I have these cut, um, I have this laid out where it cuts three different faces, eight inch intervals. Okay, and so here's my toolpath settings. I have it to cut at 0.51 and my stock is a half inch so just to be safe 0.51 so the last time I used this 
I failed to properly tighten down this end mill. It was tight, but not tight enough. And it came off in the middle of a job and kind of burned up a little bit. So I'm going to test it to see how it works. If not, I'll just have to replace it. All right, I have my file loaded up. Zero it out. Dust collector. Turn the spindle on. Okay, done. Not the cleanest. Again, my end mill is on its way out and I'm using an upcut and plus this is very soft white cedar. Not too bad. It took about 15 minutes total. Again, not super complicated. All right, and there we go. Six faces. Little cleanup work inside and then off to the table saw. All right, so the last thing to do for the woodworking side of it is just create this little tenon for the lid. And this will change, the size of this will change depending on what your opening will be on your design and the dimensions. Mine is about an inch and a half by the width of the face, which is five and a half inches. And what I normally do is I create a little profile, that way it helps guide it in. And you also don't want to be exact with the fit because wood will expand and contract and sometimes it'll be hard to get in. So just make it a little smaller than the opening. So all I do is I use a little wood glue and some brads to hold it in place for the wood to dry and you're good. That is a wrap. Now, this is very easy to build. Anyone can do it. You don't necessarily need a CNC. You can use a scroll saw. You can use a jigsaw. You can make it as big as you want, as small as you want. Any beginner with a CNC can do it. It's a fun little project and you can make a couple dozen of them. So follow along, subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you next time. Ooh. Ooh. Spooky.